Hello, welcome back. As you can see, I finished the gun, the uh, Karl Moser mortar. It's a siege mortar, as I've mentioned in the past, and this is it. It's all finished. I'm gonna, I've got yet to assemble the railway gear, the, the railway carriages, and the frames that carry it. But I shall do that on the next video, and that will be the final reveal. So on this one. On this video, I just want to show you what I've done. I'll stop it rotating in a second or two. There are some very, very delicate parts on this. There really are. In particular, this handrail. As you can see, it's very, very thin. And I have to say, I've broken it twice. But I've managed to repair it, and I'll show you how. The ladders, the access ladders to the, the decks here, are also very fragile. Especially where they join together with the photo etch and when I stop it spinning around I'll show you that as well in fact I'll stop it spinning around now come to the shell in a minute or two it's quite a heavy piece of kit this it really is uh, the handrails as I say very very thin I broke them in two places here and here they're much too thin to glue together I don't know if the camera will pick up what I've done there to try and repair it but what I've done is I super glued initially a very uh, a very short piece of tissue kitchen roll in fact super glued that with a tail hanging out this way onto the broken bit then wound it round and pulled it taut and with a t cocktail stick dabbed more super glue on it until it went hard and basically did the same with this on this top one here and it seems to have held it quite well I also broke it somewhere else I can't see it now but you, literally you've only to touch it and and it snaps it's it really is that fragile that that, that that's delicate the shells the two shells this one that's in here now is what they call a, a large shell I'd call them both large shells and this one is a standard shell reducing the scale uh, but putting the scale back to real life that one would be nine feet tall that's that's a hell of a, a hell of a piece of weaponry um, move that back a bit so you can see it that one would be nine feet tall and this one would be six feet tall so you wouldn't want to be on the receiving end of either of those two as you can see looking at that there are no brush lines in it you'd be hard pushed to tell whether I'd airbrushed that or paintbrushed it it actually paintbrushed it and what I did was I, I primed it with the spray gun and then as an experiment I painted the green with a paintbrush and I used acrylic paint and a single drop a dishwasher rinse aid and I'll tell you what if you didn't know it was brush painted you'd be hard pushed to tell it really it, I, it's come out really well much better than I expected same on this one and they look as though they've been spray painted which I'm quite impressed about the back of it the shell here seems to have some kind of um, some kind of fan on it and I would imagine that that's to give it a little bit of extra propulsion as the the cordite or black powder whichever they use is is fired inside it spins this like a turbo and helps to propel it to wherever it's going that sits in there this is the breech get my fingers out of the way I could put that put it over there this is the breech the shell would go inside I'm not going to push it all the way in because it's a devil's own job to get it back out again that would go all the way in into the barrel and then basically the same as any, any any rifle that would close behind it and you would then pull the firing mechanism put your hands against your ears and wait for it to go off apparently it took 10 minutes between rounds to to recharge it fire it and uh, to re fire it reload it and fire it again was 10 minutes all of this mechanism here for, for loading the shells when it's being transported 
is all folded away and put onto another wagon. So this, this loading ramp here, all this assembly would be put on another railway wagon. And the top here, the recoil system from the top here would go onto another railway wagon. There's another couple of other, uh, another couple of other bits and pieces that would go on the railway wagon. Apparently there's eight in total that are carried separately. I didn't want to leave them separate because it, it's a model, it's not going to be transported anywhere. And I wanted the whole effect, the, the finished effect. So the only thing I've had to change is under here, this would be a screw raised to level it if you like. And I've had to cut the bottom off it. You'd never know the difference. And that is so that when I come to assemble it on the railway wagon, the end of that loading system can go just inside. I can show you that a little bit better from another angle, I think. Just, yeah, you can. Just inside this, this frame here. And I don't think that will detract at all. So that's what I've done there. And anything else I needed to show you? I don't think so. I think I've got it all in there. It's uh, it's it's a meaty piece of kit. It's quite a bit of weight in it as well. I've done all the weathering on it. You can see the exhaust pipes. You can see the soot coming out of the exhaust pipes. I, I think it was Les asked me why I'd ground the powders up, the soft pastels up instead of sanding them. And as you can see on the soot there from the exhaust pipe, it, if, if you grind them, you get a nice texture with it. Whereas if you leave them as a powder, it, it, it looks more like paint. So that's why I've done it. The powders that I've put on the wheels were powders and and they don't quite show as, as much. The, the front of it, I've rusted the top of the gun a little bit. I don't think it would be in a poor condition. I think that would be the best kept piece of the machine. That's about it. The, the, the markers, the gun does move up and down. I'm not going to do it now because I've, I've put the, the shell in there. What else? What else? What else? Nothing else. That's about it. That's about all I can show you on it, really. I had left this without a, a marker on it, so I put a marker on it, and that would be your marker for winding it. There are no handles on that, oddly. I don't know why there are no handles on it. I may make one to put on it. And that is about it. It's a nice piece of kit. Again, on this side, you can see the, the soot stains coming out underneath the from the exhaust pipes there and I'm very very happy with it it's a lovely piece of kit that's taken me just under four months to complete so for the 125 quid that was paid for it I think that's four months well and truly taken up nicely that's that, that's that's really nice it's uh, and it's a nice nice achievement to have built it as well Any questions, any comments, please leave them in the boxes below. It would be absolutely fabulous if you could like and subscribe. And until the next time, ta-da!